Hey folks, wait no more. September's free marketplace content is here and we're offering double the products this month. Launch your own on-rail space shooter with out of this world warp effects and customized dialogue boxes. Space not your thing? Take your ArcViz projects into VR, populate your world with unique characters, take a swim with a dynamic water system and more. While these items are only available for free this month, you can always add effects to your footsteps with the now permanently free Niagara Footstep System. And if that wasn't enough content to get you started, in collaboration with ArtCore Studios, we're excited to help you ramp up production on your next project with a brand new free factory environment collection. The industrial pack features all the advanced machinery, vehicles, props, and fine refreshments you'd expect to find in any modern large-scale manufacturing center. Download all this free content from the Unreal Engine Marketplace. After those freebies, if you find yourself still searching for just the thing to accelerate your development, over 1,000 items are on sale at 50% off during the September flash sale. Featuring new marketplace arrivals, discover everything from mountain meadows and dazzling automotive materials to dynamic sound effects and high quality props. The sale runs through September 7th at 11.59 p.m. Eastern. Selecting the proper time and person to approach about funding is just as important as having a strong project to present. Author and co-host of the Virtual Economy podcast, Mike Futter, returns with the next article in his Finding Funding series to explore different types of investments and how to secure funding for your company or project. The recently released genre-blending No Straight Roads harmonizes elements from traditional rhythm games with action platformer mechanics. Featuring a rock music versus EDM motif, No Straight Roads is Epic Mega Grant recipient Metronomic's first ever game. Head over to the Unreal Engine feed to hear from their two founding members and discover not only how they composed combat sequences that locked into the soundtrack's rhythm, but also how they overcame a few challenges during development. And now over to our top weekly karma earners. Many, many thanks to Clockwork Ocean, Every Nun, Herb64, Okari, Churer, Tisumisaki, Mama Marsis, Shadow River, Haojun Dai, and Static Void LOL. Thank you all so very much. From around the community, released on August 18th, Action RPG Mortal Shell tests your sanity and resilience in a shattered world. Your adversaries spare no mercy with survival demanding superior awareness, precision, and instincts. Possess lost warriors, track down hidden sanctums of the devout, and face formidable foes. Download and play Mortal Shell from the Epic Game Store or Steam. This gorgeous scene you see here is Epitaph, built by a student team from the NAD School in Montreal, Canada. You can view the entirety of the beautiful yet somber short film on Mufit's ArtStation page. In Backpack Games' Out of Place, prove yourself in the mysterious world of Mytham. Help Simon find a way back home, defeat your enemies, and restore a war-scarred world in a tale of friendship, hope, and courage. You can wishlist Out of Place on Steam. Thanks for tuning in to our news and community spotlight. Hi everyone and welcome to Inside Unreal, a weekly show where we learn, explore and celebrate everything Unreal. I'm your host Victor Broden and my guest today is RTX Unreal Engine evangelist Richard Cowgill from NVIDIA. Welcome to the show. Uh, thanks. Hi, good to be here. It's good to have you. Uh, would you mind giving us a little bit of an introduction of your background and then what we're going to talk about today? Sure. Uh, my uh, background is in uh, game development. I've uh, done game design and art uh for about 20 25 years um i've done independent development and uh triple a development so like every range in between and uh our focus today is on ray tracing specifically in unreal 4. uh this is sort of my area of specialty i actually made an, uh, an indie game before i uh, came to work for nvidia last year um that was uh, ray tracing only 
Uh, but my background, I've, I've been, like I said, I've been developing games for a long time. I've uh, worked on the Battlefield series, Borderlands. Uh, if you want to go way back, I uh, helped make Desert Combat, if anybody remembers that. So, um, yeah, quite a quite a range of projects and uh, different sizes and scales and uh, things like that. So, but yeah, today is all about ray tracing and what we can do. So you've, you've basically seen and been a part of the progress from sort of, you know, 720p, even 640 maybe, um, and now yeah. until today where we're at and some of the new technologies that um, you all are working on. Yeah, when I got started in the industry, I mean, like the 3DFX card was like a brand new thing. So, it, you know, it's like, wow, we can do, you know, accelerated rasterized graphics for the first time. Uh -huh. um, so that's, uh, you know, that's pretty old. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, very different. Uh, I'm really excited um, for everyone to see what you have prepared for us here today. Sure. So uh, can you see my screen okay? Yep, yep, yep. Okay. Uh, we'll just get right into it. This is a, this is an RTX GI scene. Um, and uh, yeah, I'll start playing this. So I'll make this full screen. This is a, a fully dynamic ray trace scene using RTX GI, which we just announced, and is uh, available for anybody to download. Um, and uh, in fact, I can just real quickly show you what it looks like with it off. So that's just standard ray tracing. Oh, and let me show you the, the frame rate delta. So, so there's our, there, this is just, uh, uh, this is using ray trace shadows uh occlusion uh reflection and translucency all the standard um ray tracing effects uh but when i turn on rtx gi uh you can see what that does yeah it and uh away. yeah and um uh it barely touched the frame rate uh, rtx gi has about a two millisecond cost uh and it's just like anything it's you can you can abuse it right you could you could crank everything up and and generate millions of rays, and uh, you know it, it'll it can cost more than two milliseconds, but it's also very optimizable. Like you can get it down to like a millisecond, and we're this is going to be something we constantly improve too. So um, that's about where it starts today. So here's this example scene. Um, you know is as has a pretty uh, um, you know uh, to do uh, RTX GI over everything um in the scene here uh has a, has a relatively low cost um i'll i'll let it speak for itself for the most part but you know you, you can see what it does again i can um turn it off it's just old ray tracing right there and you see it's got about that two millisecond cost and here i am at, at 1080p now, uh, I mean, so th this is also about other technologies we're working on, like the LSS. I can uh, turn that on, um, and you can see what that does to the frame rate. So, you know, it's like the same quality level or even better. Um, and you can see it's, it's a, a significant boost yeah, uh, and, in frame rate to do that. And you mentioned earlier uh, during our uh, preparation that you actually saw a uh, about a 25% performance reduction because of the streaming over Discord. Yes, uh, normally this would be more like 90 or 100 frames a second. Uh, hopefully everybody can see the frame rate counter there. Um, I'm Yeah, I'm right now, uh, I'm running on a, uh, an i7 system with a 2080 Ti. So uh, a performance level that is considered now sort of the, the low end of the new generation of RTX cards. Uh, normally I would expect, like I said, 90 or 100 frames per second out of a scene like this. Um, uh, but just, I can just walk around a little bit and, you know, this is, it's a fully dynamic interactive environment. It's got collision, reflections are happening. There was a question from chat. They were wondering um, if, RTX GI is ray traced? Yes. Yeah, it's only possible with ray tracing. I can explain some of that, um, how that actually works. Here, let me, uh, 
we get this just so everybody knows you see this debug text at the bottom of the screen that's just uh to let me know that um dlss is active that wouldn't be like running in the application or you know a shipping game that's just my debug text so i can see it like when i go back to the old anti-aliasing method uh the debug text goes away uh if i turn that back on um you know it actually it's it's telling me as a developer what it's what it's doing here because if you if you look it says the res the input resolution is 675 uh by 421 in this case and then it's upscaling it to 1162 okay. by 725 but you can see what it's doing there and uh anyway but um on the uh the, the ray tracing aspect of rtxgi this is what's actually going on in the background and i'll pull i'll pull out this the this test scene is an attic uh it was originally uh, omnikit art it was made by one artist at nvidia um and let's see i can grab the ddgi volume so so this is a, a gi volume much like a light mass volume you would you know, where you would wrap it around your gameplay space and just like a light mass volume it's got uh sort of probe points for generating light so this is the debug mode i can i can see um each uh rtx gi probe point and sort of the the lighting profile that it's generating at that point it's using ray tracing at each one of these uh sphere points to generate what what the probe sees so uh, each probe is uh, uh, casting thousands of, of rays. Uh, and you can see there's lots of them, but it's handling it just fine. Um, but that's what's actually going on uh, sort of behind the scenes. So I've, I've got a, a volume here. We call them DDGI volumes, uh, Dynamic Direct uh, GI, because uh, it's exactly what it sounds like. It's fully dynamic. Um, uh, uh, diffuse lighting and um, you can you have a lot of configuration you'll see that's a very sort of common thing with everything I'm going to talk about there's a lot of uh, configuration and options you can you have um, but you can set like you know how many uh, how many rays per probe uh, per frame are being generated um, you know sort of how much sampling is it doing the default here we have is 288 but uh, a lot of times you can actually go less than that um, and like I said, this, this is where things are at right now. This is like the, basically the 1.0 of the product, but we have, there's, uh, more optimizations to come to speed this up even more. Um, you might notice certain things in here, like these, some probes are black with uh, red around them. That means that they're not touching anything and they're not relevant. So they've been put to sleep. Um, it's sort of, you know, it, it'll, so if I'm sloppy with my volume and I've made it like too big. That can be okay. I mean, at least to a certain extent. Okay. Um, yeah. So you know, I, I haven't done like any like real, not like real fine tuning of the scene. I just took a volume. Whoops, I moved it. Uh, yeah. Let me grab that. Oh, what did I do? I moved it way off. Way off. Okay. Hold on. Okay. So I can, there's my volume. And you can see as soon as I moved it up here into like non-relevant space, it immediately put a whole bunch of probes to sleep because they're they're not touching anything. They're not, mm -hmm. they're not doing anything important. That's a nice little automatic performance helper. Yeah, it's a very smart system. It, it's got some neat options to it. Um, uh, uh, I mean, you, you might be saying to yourself like, oh, probes, you know, like, if you look at the current RTGI, it's like that's just that's just completely automatic, right? You switch it on, but it's doing. There's a lot of uh, sampling noise. It's it's. I think everybody considers it to be in its current state. It's it's like a beta product. It's not completely there yet, and that's understandable because it's you know just it's uh, RTGI is is basically beta. It's um, but it, it's it's got some drawbacks in that it it doesn't it doesn't currently run very fast and it's it's it can be kind of noisy because of the sampling. RTXGI doesn't uh, it doesn't suffer from any of the sampling issues because it's not it's basically it's not operating that way. It's uh, 
it's using probe points to generate uh, spherical textures that, they, that then get reprojected back into the scene. So ray tracing is used in the generation, um, but not in the projection, basically. And it's uh, and so therefore it doesn't suffer from any of the uh, uh, noise issues that you normally get with um, uh, uh, current uh, GI ray tracing. Um, and uh, I mean this this system allows you to. It, it does everything you'd expect GI to do. It does, uh, it's, you know, it'll, it'll do a colored bounce light. Um, it will do uh, soft ambient shadows. Um, so uh, lighting and shadow is fully occluded. Um, you know, yeah, and you don't necessarily need uh, really dense probes in order to get that kind of result. Um, this is kind of, you see generally it's pretty sparse. I've got some secondary volumes in here where I want more detail, but that's really not necessary. It's just sort of like, you know, I just wanted to do sort of the maximum quality on this on this scene, um, and so some of these uh, some of these extra probe volumes are in here for that reason. But anyway, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, I, I, that's kind of a long-winded answer, but. Um, yeah, anything else on that uh, you wanted to ask? Uh, there are plenty of questions, but also know we have a lot to cover today. So why don't we go through sure. some of the uh, things that we have prepared and then we'll dig into questions uh, either as they come up specifically or leave some of the more general ones uh, till the end. Because I know a lot of the questions that are coming in, uh, Richard will be covering throughout the uh, presentation. Yeah. Okay. Um, so yeah, uh, uh, there's lots of really cool things you can do with RTX GI. Uh, uh, and I'll let me let me turn off the probe so we can see the scene. Um, one of the uh, well, one of one of the one of the benefits of this method is uh, mesh lighting, um, and this is really an incredible feature. Uh, outside the window here, I've got large emissive surfaces. Every in in this scenario with RTX GI. Every emissive surface is a light, um, and it's it's completely uh, performance free. Like you get that for free. In fact, when you saw it, I moved that back, it, ger it generated a little bit of light right there, on uh, on this wood plank. You see yeah. that it lit it up. So if I go back in here, you know, and I move that away, you see it gets dimmer inside. Mm -hmm. You know, so if I make the mesh more emissive, it effectively emits more light. And in this case, um, I also wanted to be able to see the outside, so I, I set like a uh, oh. like a, a depth based opacity on it, so that as you approach the window, it fades down. That's a nice trick. Um, yeah, and uh, it's still generating light. It doesn't need to be visible to generate light. Uh, in fact, over here, um, I have an invisible mesh. I, uh, easiest way for me to see is probably wireframe. Where's that guy? There he is. So there's a sphere mesh right here with the same uh, material on it, except it's in this case it's flagged to be invisible. And I did that because in this in this branch um, we don't have caustics on this branch. That's uh, that's a whole separate issue. But one of the things caustics lets you do, uh, which we're going to be getting to, is uh, uh, light transmission through surfaces, semi-translucent shadows, basically. Mm -hmm. Um, so if if this if this had caustics and GI and everything in here, um, this this surface here could be, uh, you know, receiving some. It could be a, a semi-translucent. Um, uh, but I can sort of fake it with a mesh light, an invisible mesh light, and that's that's why I'm doing some denser sampling in certain key areas. You know, and you don't have to do that, but if you want uh, GI lighting, you know, in in certain areas to pop more than other areas, um, you can do that. And the individually, the probes are very inexpensive. Uh, um, you know, each one individually is virtually free. They only cost something when there's you know tons and tons of them. But uh, there's even ways to mitigate that and, and pull that back in performance. So this is why it ends up being so uh, such an, a performant efficient system. And uh, also also worth pointing out, uh, you might see a little bit of artifacting here in the GI, like it's generating 
like a GI that appears to move. But that's because I also have SSGI on. So RTX GI can work with SSGI. You can use both. That's just a, a choice, right? You don't have to. Um, but sometimes SS, SSGI uh, can give you just like a little bit of an extra lift in certain locations. This is with SSGI off. You know, and it looks fine. Um, just, uh, uh, you know, uh, doing uh, RTX GI. BC SSGI created just a little bit of extra lift at the mm -hmm. bottom of the couch there. That to me looks better. And I'm just as an artist, I'm, I'm saying, okay, I'm willing to take some of the screen space artifacts uh, in order to get a little bit of extra light boost. Um, you know, these are just, uh, this is part of the flexibility of Unreal, right? Like we have these choices that we can make um, to sort of pump in more detail or more lighting, um, uh, you know, if, if we want to get a certain result. And uh, there were a few questions coming in related to uh, will this project or any of the stuff you're showing today uh, will be accessible for people to uh, dig into and test out at some point? Yes. Uh, the, the whole point of this here is, is that it, it should be an example project that everybody has access to. So all the, all the content will be downloadable. Uh, you can tear it open, take a look at how the scene's built. Um, uh, th there will be a version of this uh, that will be uh, compatible with just like regular uh, Unreal and our our branch. We call it NVRTX. Uh, it's on our website, but that that branch has like it's got DLSS and uh, branch like uh, ray tracing specific optimizations that aren't in mainline yet. And um, so so you can get either version of it. You can compare the two. You can see the performance gains you get from DLSS, um, all that sort of thing. Uh, and, and and sort of see, yeah, like what the effects are and the differences are. And to be clear, you're currently on the uh, custom, de uh, your branch, right? NVIDIA's branch. Right. Yeah, because I wanted, I wanted to show RTX GI and the LSS both running in this scene together. Um, yeah, in fact, I mean, just like right here, like this is, again, we're looking at the current anti-aliasing method. If I uh, switch, switch it to uh, DLSS, you can see I get the frame rate boost. Quality still looks good. You can you can see what it's doing, you know, sort of behind the scenes by looking at the debug text. You want to go uh, full screen Wait. for us? Oh sure. Yeah, and yeah, I, I can't remember if we mentioned it already, but yes, I am I am losing some frame rate from doing the stream. I mean, like I said, this is normally ninety or a hundred is mm -hmm. is more like what we'd. Uh, expect to see this this scene uh by the way i mean like i said it was it was made by uh one artist at uh at uh nvidia but it was intended for um omnikit this is this was like you know sort of like cgi level or like offline rendering level um graphics and so you're looking at like a, a two million triangle scene it's very dense very high poly um and uh it's been brought into unreal um uh, to you know it and sort of like uh, assembled you know in the unreal way so there's like individual objects and we can look at like what the performance is so it's got you know interactivity and gameplay um you know proper collision on things uh you know that's a uh, there's all kinds of physics going on so this is like a it's like a real scene you know this could be a game that's part of the point of this is like it needs to be real, right? A, a mm -hmm. tangible thing that you can look at and uh, take apart and uh, know that it's it's practical. And uh, also, you know, completely done with blueprints, by the way. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of just like fun little interactivity in here. And it's still being developed. But yeah, this will... Uh... Here's the cool... My, yeah, the, the one thing. <laughs> this I, is your I, favorite, right? so, Yeah, it's my favorite by, by far. Yeah, I mean, this, this just shows how... Um, accurate ray trace shadows can be because, like I said, it's fully dynamic ray tracing for everything, reflections, shadows, translucency. If you look really carefully, you'll see the character reflecting in the sphere. That's not screen space. And you know, I kick it around. You know, the the great thing about ray trace shadows is you can see how how sharp the uh, uh, the the shadow casting is 
at the base, like where the, the, the light's coming out of the star, but then as it gets further away, it's got that nice penumbra effect. Uh huh. This definitely makes me want to see like a uh, ray trace disco game in the next game jam. Right, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah lots of uh, dynamic lighting. It's all, all dynamic. Yeah, dynamic mesh lights in this case. Right, it's just a, an emissive material, right? On those yeah. uh, green bulbs? Yeah. Well, and and so yeah, uh, full transparency. There there are little, very small non shadow casting point lights also placed. Okay. Uh, here, but they're not generating the light really. They're just they're just like for a little bit of touch. Um, they're very they got a very small radius on them, and it's just so that it it, it creates a little more precision. But it's it's not necessary at all. Like you could just go with GI. Um, uh, it, but it you know, it's non shadow casting lights are very close to free. So it's almost why not? Um, but you know, you, know you, you wouldn't have to do it that way. Like I said, I can, uh, I can turn the GI lighting off and you can see, so that's the direct lighting and everything else around it. Okay, so there's some screen space, yeah. So if I turn the, yeah, or I turn the GI on, GI off. So the GI contribution is significant. Yeah, and that's stuff that you, without any form of uh, dynamic global illumination, you would have to fake with like indirect point lights and, um, yeah. you know, bake it out with, you know, play around with your uh, skylight and such to try to get that. Right, exactly. Yeah, and I don't know if, if, if what I just did there was completely obvious to everybody, but that was, you just saw RTX GI uh, 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 do occluded, it's doing occluded shadow and lighting in real time with like changing geometry. It's a fully dynamic system. Um, so there's a lot of advantages to, uh, to this. Um, I mean, you know, it's, it's, uh, and it produces a very clean result. Like there's, yeah. there's, that's, I mean, that's, that's one of the key things. It doesn't have, um, some of the noise issues that we saw in like, like the very first iteration of ray tracing. This is, uh, significantly advanced, very stable, very fast. Um, so there, there's a lot of, uh, you know, sort of good quality advantages. So we touched quite a bit on GI here. Would you mind explaining for those who have never heard, um, about DLSS, what it is and what it does? Yeah. Uh, so, uh, DLSS, uh, is, uh, uh, it's basically a new form of, uh, of, uh, uh, image enhancement and anti-aliasing that uses uh, deep learning models. So um, uh, we're using artificial intelligence to take a lower resolution image like what I have here uh, right now. This is, pretend like this is your input image and uh, we're, we're scaling it up to full screen. Um, the, in, the actual input image is, is like this. It's, it's smaller, low resolution. What the AI is doing is it's as it scales it up, it's uh, looking at all the edge pixels. It's looking at um, uh, all the little details that basically get lost and reconstructing those details in real time. Uh, in fact, if you look down here in the debug text, it's telling you what the millisecond cost is in order to do that reconstruction. So in this case, it's a half a millisecond. Only costs a half a millisecond for an RTX card to do that real time reconstruction of a lower res image into a higher res image. And compare um, that then to actually drawing those pixels or telling the GPU to draw those pixels. That is a significantly, uh, you know, th that's yeah. a lot lower. Yeah. I mean, you know, uh, fill rate issues, I suppose, are like sort of like a very large bottleneck. The, you know, the, <laughs> the, the smaller an image is, the more postage stamps. One uh, moment there, Richard, you cut uh, off. You, you oh, sure. cut, okay, I think you're back. Yes, yes, you're okay. back. All right, great. Uh, yeah, hopefully not too many of those. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's, I mean, it's it's not just like sharpening it and like scaling it up. It's, it's constructing detail and inserting that detail into the scene and making it look right. And it knows how to do this because I guess the best answer is, is artificial intelligence is just really good at image reconstruction. 
It understands images. It understands how to do it. The the AI, it's been talked about, but you know the the AI algorithm is is trained. Uh, is it's fed uh, a, a ton of ultra high resolution images, and it's basically taught what things should look like, how light should interact, how details should appear to the human eye, and it learns how to do all those things. And then once it's once it's been taught, and there's years of development that's gone into teaching the AI how to do this sort of thing, it then it inserts that detail into, you know, uh, basically an enhanced uh, lower resolution image. And uh, it, the, the, the fascinating result with that is that a lot of times the lower resolution image that's scaled up, it, is, it looks better than the native image. And I know that's been talked about a lot, but it's a real thing. Like it starts pulling out text that you couldn't read otherwise. Um, some of that just might be maybe, you know, uh, current anti-aliasing methods are, while really, really good, you know, they don't do every detail perfectly. Mm -hmm. um, and DLSS just might, it, there's some, you know, there's some interesting discussion points there, but DLSS might be doing some, I mean, it's definitely, um, you know, it's, it's, it understands what images should look like, pulls them out, makes them look better. Um, so it's, it's a very impressive technology and it benefits the, the, the great thing about it is that it, you know, it works like, uh, it, like if you have an RTX card, it just works, right? So DX11, DX12, ray traced, not ray traced, those details don't matter. But in the case of ray tracing, it really helps the seat because, I mean, ray tracing is doing higher quality work, right? Higher quality lighting and shadow reflection, real reflections as opposed to fake ones. So uh, anytime you go higher quality, uh, you know, there's a cost to that, right? So uh, uh, technology like DLSS gives you your frame rate back. Uh, any frame rate you might have lost uh, to ray tracing, to going higher quality, DLSS returns to you. Um, and uh, and I would I would just point out that like, uh, I mean these are like pure software advancements, right? Like ray tracing is getting better, DLSS is getting better. Um, they're advancing, and they're not. These are not technologies that are holding still. Uh, there's going to be further advancements, you know, that are coming out. We'll we'll see more and more, um, uh, but it's it's definitely impressive stuff. I mean, I, I'm, you know, I know this is my job and everything, but I'm <laughs> constantly blown away by what I'm seeing, uh, being produced here. And I have to say, like, as you see, I, I'm I'm turning on DLSS with a console command, so the anti-aliasing method two is TAA. You know, there it is off, and you saw the frame rate drop. So four is for uh, for DLSS, and largely there's very little or no configuration that's really needed. You see, I just doubled my frame rate mm -hmm. in the shot, and um, I don't have to I don't have to finesse it. I can. There are options to finesse it further, but um, it's it really is one of those things where you just kind of like turn it on and uh, get the results. So do DLSS completely replace um, the need for any other form of anti-aliasing? Yeah, it's right. a full-on replace. It does its own version, its own way of doing that. And concepts of like temporal upsampling or like a, a lot of, uh, 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 you know, prior to DLSS, if you're trying to get maximum frame rate out of uh, your software, you might, you might do something like, um, you know, you'll turn on uh, upsampling, uh, you'll run it at a, a, a lower screen percentage, you know, 83%, 75%, you might do something like that. Run it at a lower screen percentage, upscale it, and then maybe run a post filter on it, like a sharpen. Uh, and, you know, that's sort of like the standard way that we might do, you know, in professional development and so on. But a lot of indies too, just everybody, that's how you might get an extra, you know, 10 frames a second out of it, say. Um, all that stuff is... You don't have to think about that anymore. That's not necessary. Don't do any of that. The DLSS just handles it, takes that lower res image and scales it up, sharpens it for you, makes it look better. There were uh, a couple more questions in regards to previously folks have heard that um, you had to train DLSS specifically for your game. Uh, that's that's yes. no longer the case, right? That's, that's right. That was DLSS 1.0. It was... 1.0 was um, it was I mean it, you know it was earlier software it uh 
uh, we had like those DLSS 1.0 had to be applied to, uh, you know, AAA projects because we would get uh, the developers binary and train uh, DLSS how to analyze their image. Um, as you can imagine, it's an artificial intelligence algorithm running in real time. It, in theory, it could do any number of things to your image. It could manipulate it in any number of ways. It could change all kinds of details. So you had to make sure it ran right. Um, and it was kind of like software to software. The LSS 2.0 uh, is, is very generalized. There, it takes any kind of image and puts in the right details and just does it automatically. It'll work on any type of environment. You know, photo reel, cartoon, doesn't matter. We have a lot of questions coming in. I'm going to try to grab some of them here uh, while sure. we're on the topic of DLSS. Um, I had one question come in that was, does DLSS work with, um, okay, there are a couple couple ones here. Um, main one, a couple questions in regards to VR, if it's possible or will be possible to use it for as a stereo rendering. Uh, yeah, that's being worked on. Um, I can't talk about release dates, but it is being developed. I've seen it personally working. Do you know if it works with, another question was, if it works with the forward renderer? Uh, I don't know that. Okay. I, I probably can't get into specifics anyway. That's okay. I'll bombard you with the questions. And then uh, perhaps if sure. there's someone, uh, either you or NVIDIA, um, who would like to follow up later, you can just go ahead and post the answers on the uh, form announcement post. Yeah. Let's see. Um, there were a couple of questions uh, moving back a little bit to RTX to GI in regards to the light probes. Um, yes. uh, someone was asking if you need to pre-calculate the RTX GI probes. No, it's, it's, uh, it's all fully dynamic. But uh, this is actually another advantage of RTX GI. Um, uh, you could say that we've, we've attempted to think this one through because the, the question might be, well, what about consoles? What about lower end systems? Uh, RTX GI today is fully dynamic, uses ray tracing to generate um, the, the light probes uh, in real time. Um, a future version of RTX GI is going to uh, bake that down for lower end systems consoles. So, uh, uh, you know, it's, it's fully dynamic on RTX cards, but, uh, uh, you know, we'll have an update at some point that will... Um, uh, 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 open that up a little bit more, uh, and uh, provide, like I said, like a baked down version of the GI for um, uh, older systems or lower end systems. I had another question come in that was, uh, how does the RTX GI handle small details or thin geometry? Uh, very well. Um, I wish I had some of those. I don't have the. We, we've that was uh, one thing we were looking at. Um, I mean, there there probably are cases where uh, certain very thin geometry or or maybe certain geometry uh, can um, uh, trip it up a little bit. But I would say in ninety some very high percentile of cases, it works extremely well. Uh, it, it won't have any leaking. Um, uh, and any issue you would run into there is usually just a, a matter of fine tuning. Um, I can show you one other thing about it that might be. Might be interesting to look at. Uh, show the probes. So there's an option on here. Enable probe relocation. It's on by default. And uh, oh, there I go. I'm moving stuff again. Um, so as I shift this around in the environment, uh, the probes will intelligently figure out where they're supposed to be. Are they inside geometry? Are they inside gameplay space? And they'll relocate themselves on the grid. Um, so they won't uh, end up uh, stuck in a place they're not supposed to uh, or, or generate uh, light and shadow in a bad way. Um, you know, if, and if, it's, if it doesn't make sense to, you see this one up here in the top corner is, re is shifting its position. See that? Just at the top there. Uh huh. So as I move the volume around, it's going, no, I need to be a little bit over here or over yeah. there. Okay. Right. And sometimes it'll go, oh, I need to be shut off. It'll just figure out where the optimal position is. Um, so that you really, you can, in a lot of cases, just sort of uh, without much fine tuning, just drop a volume in the world. 
um, count on the, pro the probe relocation to give you decent results. You see like, yeah, that's interesting. And I'm not seeing a uh, significant performance like drop while you're... No, no. And it, it's, yeah, it's all real time. It's constantly being recalculated. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but we, uh, yeah, we're, we're looking at further optimizations on that. Like I said, it's a two millisecond cost today, but uh, I, people can expect it to get faster and better. Uh, just because, I mean, I, I'm, I'm so glad Ampere came out because, uh, uh, yeah, you might... You might be, uh, someone might suspect, oh, well, you know, they just made uh, ray tracing cards that are twice as fast, so they don't need to you know, try to improve the software. That, that's definitely not the case. We're, the software is advancing and will get faster and better. Um, and, and that's over and above like what people, you know, are, are seeing with the hardware improvements. Yeah, you know, I was saying this last year when we first um, released ray traced lighting and shadows. And reflections. Um, I was, you know, like it's it's early days, but it it's still early days, right? Um, yeah. Um, I mean, uh, you know, uh, you might you might consider. I mean, just if you step back a little bit and look at what's happening right now, and um, uh, there, there could be some debate about this for sure. But uh, uh, you know, starting with Unreal four two two. Uh, uh, ray, you could look at ray tracing as a very specific set of things. It was shadows, it was translucency, reflection, um, uh, uh, I, I can't remember. <laughs> it, it, it was, but it was a very narrowly narrow set of things: uh, reflection, translucency, shadows, stuff like that. Um, we're kind of getting into a second generation of the software now. We're looking at real time GI that is. Uh, extremely fast. Um, I mean, like I said, this I'm running on a 2080 Ti, no longer the high end, and I'm getting very good performance with it. Very uh, stable image. Um, uh, uh, and we're looking at things like caustics, uh, which is not hypothetical anymore. It's, it's a real thing. Um, you could kind of look at the, this, this next generation of ray tracing enhancements, almost, almost like a second generation to go with the second generation cards. Um, and, uh, it's, it's, like I said, I, I feel like it needs to be reinforced. The software is evolving. It's getting better and faster and higher quality. So it's, it's not the static thing where it was two years ago or a year ago. Um, I expect it to, we're going to see, uh, continual improvements over where we are now. Um, just a clarification. Someone was wondering if DLSS blurs all text, but it's actually just that debug text that is overlaid, right? Um, oh yeah. You're seeing, uh, you mean like it gets blurry in the scene or? Yeah, I think when, what? yeah. So, uh, when it's full screen and you fly around, you can see sort of the debug text, um, you know, moving. Um, yes. And, yeah. And that's some, nothing to be. Nothing to be concerned about. That is just, um, that's just, uh, I don't know why it's not doing it now. Yeah, it's actually. But, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that that effect right there, right, where it gets mm -hmm. uh, strangely blurry. That's just the debug text being debug text. It's, you know, like I said, if I if I built an EXE, uh, I wouldn't see that. And, um, uh, you know, or I would if I had the debug, you know, uh, uh, DLL in. But the um, that's that's just you know, part of development. It's, uh, yeah, it's, it's nothing to be concerned about. Let's see, we, uh, have a few more questions coming in, but I, I think we can uh, leave a couple of them, uh, later. Sure. I know you're going to cover a few more things. Yeah. I have other, uh, other content I can show. I mean, this, this attic scene is something I'm eager, uh, for everybody to get their hands on. It's not quite ready yet as, um, like an example, project, but I, I feel like the more examples we can get into people's hands, they can, you know, load up the editor files and, and take a look at everything. That's kind of the best way to um, uh, really understand what this is and what we're doing. And uh, to clarify, and, you did mention that the this scene will eventually be available in the, the vanilla version of Unreal? Yeah, I think we'll, um, we'll probably put out both 
vanilla and NVRTX mm -hmm. versions at the same time. And I did see a question earlier. Someone asked if the uh, NVIDIA branch provided binaries. As far as I know, uh, you have to compile it from source. Yes, yes. Um, yeah, we, I mean, well, I can just show that real quick. We tried to make this really easy. Um, I understand I'm not a, uh, I'm not a coder. Like I don't, I don't write code. I'm a, I'm a, I am ai have a design background and art background. Um, but, uh, even I can do this. So, uh, you know, we, uh, if you go to, uh, our, uh, unreal engine off developer dot nvidia dot com. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, uh, you, all you got to do is get GitHub access and that's just creating an account and getting approval. And then once you do that, um, you can, you can grab the branch and we, we, we document all this. Um, uh, and, and I mean, once you're in and you have the code and you pull it down, um, you know, here's the branch right here. And we're, you know, uh, we have you know versions going back, but this is, um, uh, it's you know it's, it's equal parity to four two five. Yeah, it's three. very recent. I'm super glad. Yeah, to see and that. and we, we coordinate everything with Epic as far as that goes. Like you know we're uh, we're in touch with you guys constantly about when's when's the next release coming out, making sure our code is ready to go when your code's ready to go. Um, so uh, the the delta between Epic putting out a new version and us updating our branch is very short. We're trying to shorten it all the time. Um, but we, we try to be, you know, days or weeks at the outside, uh, but very, very quickly. Um, uh, but all the sources here, you know, just, you just get the code and, uh, and, and build it. And we have, uh, you know, installation steps for, um, uh, you know, everything like, you know, what you need to run DLSS and, uh, 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 a pretty good um, uh, guide for, you know, how to uh, uh, get it all set up for yourself. Um, so, we, yeah, we're trying to make that as easy as possible. And, and really, I'm, I'm, I'm serious. If I can do it, you can do it. Um, we have a lot of non-coders at NVIDIA producers and so on, um, testers who are uh, uh, people uh, who, who, you know, uh, they've learned to do this too. They just pull down the code, you build it. Um, it's kind of powerful once you're once you're in there and you're doing that. Once you uh, uh, realize that it's it's not nearly as complicated as it seems, and uh, all the uh, like the the uh, the quality enhancements, the the performance enhancements, especially, um, they're they're significant. So it's it's really good to get if you're if you're serious about doing a ray tracing project, you should get in our branch and. Um, get that code. Before we leave the uh, attic scene, there was a question in regards to um, the god rays that's coming in through the window. The question was, how are you getting ray tracing shadows to work with volumetric lighting to cast those god rays? That's that's in our branch. Uh, yeah, that's it's not currently in the main branch, but it's in our branch. It's uh, something we we recently addressed. Someone out there in chat yeah, there's, paying good attention. Yeah, sure. Yeah, there's there's lots of lots of little enhancements like that. That's that's a good catch. I mean, that was done on purpose for the scene too, right? Because we're we, I don't want to just have this scene to uh, test one thing. We need to look at everything. Mm -hmm. We need to look at how DLSS works with volumetric fog shadows and how that works with ray tracing enhancements. Because that's what developers are going to do. You're going to look at everything together and see the combined result. What's the performance like? What's the quality like? It has to be there. So, um, yeah, to see, test scenes like this are to make sure all that's, uh, that's working right. There's also someone wondering if it's possible to turn the input resolution right down and see what we can get away with. Uh, the input resolution? To... Oh, for uh, DLSS? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I'm not sure about that. Um, I, I'll, I mean, I'll be honest, I'm not a, I'm not a DLSS deep expert. I, I understand at a high level, there might be tweaks in there to do that, but I'm not, I'm not hundred percent. Sure. Okay. Why don't you go down to the branch and try to figure it out? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Go, go take a look. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, all, all right. Um, unless there's anything more here, I, I know you have a couple more levels that, um, impress me. So, 
Yeah, uh, I just wanted to maybe I can kind of speed through some of that because I'm, I don't know, I might be uh, might be spending too much time on that. Oh, we this got, is uh, this is a good time. This is our okay. This is our basic example project. Um, as you can see, it's NVRTXGI example. So this is our based off our NVRTX branch. So it has all of our RTX enhancements plus RTXGI. Okay. Um, so this is a custom branch. I mean, I put it together. But anybody can do this. Um, uh, so, so this is just, uh, you know, uh, if if people saw uh, like uh, certain webinar videos recently, um, uh, you know, you might have seen this already. But it's just a good like dynamic ray tracing example. It shows like fully dynamic lighting. In this case, uh, ray trace GI uh, or RTX GI is is on here. So if I uh, turn that off. You can see you lose a lot of the color, the bounce lighting. Or look back here. There's a little bit of GI. You can, if you look attentive, people will notice, like right there. I can't see where I'm pointing, but there's uh, right here, there's a little bit of GI happening. That's screen space. If I look away, it goes away. Oh, yeah. But it's, you know, it's, good, it's good to have, right? If you want it, it's there. An RTX GI is compatible with it if you want that little bit of extra lift in certain places. And there's, there's RTX GI on. So you can see there's a lot more very subtle lighting and shadow activity happening with that enhancement. Um, this is an interesting, uh, this is another another way to look at what, what what's possible with mesh lighting because I can I take these uh, emissive materials here and just go like that and create lighting in the scene. There's really no limit on that, right? And that's, I mean, that's real light that gets bounced and occluded and does everything you'd expect. It's possible to completely light your scene this way. Um, RTXGI is, I mean, it is by definition, uh, it's not super precise. It's not like super high resolution, but it will, um, you know, cover most of your lighting needs just like that. And that those would be uh, mesh lights that are generating like all that, uh, 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 like uh, uh, diffuse shadow, colored bounce lighting in real time uh, with no additional cost. And you're in a darker area. Yeah, yeah. That little alcove there was pretty cool to see when you placed. Yeah. Yeah. Starts to make purple in between. Uh huh. I and mean, that's just fun, right? Yeah. <laughs> that's cool. I don't know what's happening, but it's, it's pretty neat. Yeah, you know, we talked <laughs> earlier about how sort of like caustics makes you think in new terms. But even here, I can see as an environment artist how all of a sudden you can sort of rethink how you would um, yes. light stuff. Yeah, I think this is um, one, of the, one of the potential sort of maybe not commonly thought about elements of RTX GI because uh, I've been a lighting artist um, and... Typically, like, you know, you do things as a lighting artist to try to make your scene look right. Uh, it can be a lot of different adjustments, everything from post-process tone mapping, um, whatever. But you might you might flood your scene with a lot of lights or, you know, bake things. And it just maybe a combination of different um, elements. Um, RTX GI eliminates all that. And in theory, you can have a scene with a lot less lighting. You, know, like you don't have to put down lots of little point lights all over the place, sort of the traditional way of, of lighting a scene. You can, well, I mean, like, I'll just, I'll just do this real quick. Like I can grab, uh, this is, you know, this is just a, a bunch of separate objects that are just got different materials on them, very simple materials. But like I could, you know, have this guy generate light Oh, whoops. And then, uh, you know, make it really physically big. And now there's light coming up from underneath here. Now we have the, the floor is not lava, but. <laughs> right. Well, we can make it lava. There, there we, we go. go. All right. Okay. Floor is lava. Yeah. Thank you. And, and it's occluded light. It's, you know, I mean, it's, it's popping up through this window over here. You know, it's, it's, uh, but it's 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 like creating like a subtle light and shadow, and then bouncing around in the scene, and 
you know, it does it gets it gets occluded where it needs to. Mm -hmm. And that was that's a no cost light. That's a zero cost light. So you a lot of situations where you might put in rect lights or or whatever, uh, maybe you still want to have them. There's there's no reason why you can't combine methods. Again, that's one of the great things about Unreal is the, the flexibility of it. Um, but you can very conceivably get away with less lighting. Um, and then RTX GI lets you, or it will let you bake that down on lower end systems. That, that's a bake, right? So, so lower end systems, consoles, that sort of thing, they will lose the dynamic element of, that RTX GI gives, but you can still see the quality. And if, if, you're, if you're not constantly changing the, the, uh, what you're doing with the lighting every frame, maybe baking down is okay. Um, so thinking I mean, about it like for it, sort of that kind of cross-platform development, what it means is that the environment artists can light the scene and then uh, unless there are dynamic elements where, you know, you want GI, um, the environment artist doesn't have to go in and sort of make a completely separate level or try to go and fake all the effects. You can actually bake all that down. Right, right. Yeah, that will, uh, yeah. Uh, and a lighting artist won't have to, won't have to really worry about that. Like mm -hmm. you'll just... You'll just bake it, and um, it'll give you a, a very similar result to your 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 real time look. Um, you know, like I said, that's that's compatibility with uh, you know lower end systems. Oh, that's so interesting. Lights coming through here because this is not shadow casting. This mesh. I'm pretty sure. I could be wrong. Yeah, you did. You did mention that. Um, I, I guess I'm wrong. <laughs> previously, <laughs> no, how, how you used a um, a specific node in the material to make the object not cast any shadows or like even be visible, right? Yes. Uh, yeah. Uh, let me. Um... Let me just. Uh... I'll switch back to the. Attic. Someone was curious if the uh, the bake feature um, is already there. Is it ready yet, or is that something that's coming? It's coming. Yeah, you'll notice uh, this is so. This is a level without uh, the volume fog. We have a we have a, a, a blueprint. You know, it's, it's a it's a console command to turn on ray traced volume fog. So when I I press play, that gets activated on okay. script. Yeah, that's why that's like that. And then you see what it how it looks appropriately. Um, uh, but let's see. Yeah. As you can see, this is a very complex scene. These are all the assets that go into making this. This is like a 2 million triangle scene, 4K textures, et cetera, et cetera. Very, very high end stuff. Um, oh, I should grab the master material. Yeah, so just using a, a ray tracing quality switch replace, in this case, uh, I'm able to I, I have your visual opacity and your ray tracing opacity. So in this case, I can I can use uh, this trick. This is one way to go, uh, and an opacity mask to um, uh, make it make something visible to ray tracing, but invisible to direct rendering. Um, and all you need is this ray tracing quality switch replace. I mean, in fact, like this, I have this is the pixel depth stuff here is just so I can do a fade. Uh, but you know, this is all that needs to be a value plugged into that, plugged into opacity, right? Very simple. You know, if I, yeah, I thought that. it was a super cool little trick. Yeah. Well, it's just something that, um, it wasn't, a lot of stuff's not super intentional, right? Like we're developing this and going, oh yeah, there's this feature in the material system for, um, uh, where you can get a different result for a ray traced result than a, a direct rendered result. Like you can get different results on the material depending on whether it's um reflecting or not so it's it's a way to um it's one way to create an invisible mesh that generates 
light. Oh, there I, 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 I set it to vanish when you get close to it. But there, that this is a good debug way to see what's yeah. going on, right? So, yeah, that's what it's actually doing. Yeah, and in fact, I mean, part of the way this is designed from a lighting, you have so many options with how you use RTX GI. You don't have to use emissive meshes. You could just go straight off the direct light, put the values in that you want. Um, it'll generate bounce light straight off the, the sunlight. And that, that's all you need. I wanted, in this case, I wanted a little bit of extra boost in the right place. It's just sort of an artistic choice. Um, but it's also a test of what it can do. And I've got like a slightly sunny tinted emissive mesh on one side and a bluish tinted one on the other. It's meant to sort of match my sky color. See, so, so if I you know, go like that, it'll, you know, as I approach the window, you know, then I can see stuff outside. Um, you know, you don't have to do something like that, but the, this is just a, a, yet another way to pump extra light into the scene, uh, you know, where you want it uh, by using emissives. And like I said, it's it's for, it's free, and you see it's fully like here where there's, you know, in between it's 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 you know where the where there's holes in the mesh, lights coming through, and then here it's occluded where it's supposed to be, and then here there's light coming through, et cetera, et cetera. I even put little emissive meshes up here, even though you can never see them in the scene, just so that there would be a little bit of extra bounce light coming in up there where I wanted it. So it's it's very tunable from uh, artistic standpoint you can you can make it as realistic as you want or as sort of artificially uh pumped up as you want there was uh there's two questions here i would like to address um so sure. i was curious if there were any licensing fees in addition um to sort of the epic license agreement uh by the use of your technology uh licensing fees uh no not that i'm aware of yeah uh, there's just uh yeah, there's just you. Uh, we just want to know basically who you are. So we have a development program, um, but we, I mean, we support everybody in these individuals, filmmakers, uh, AAAs, anybody who's interested. We, we, we have an interest to know who's using our software. That's really all it is. On the topic of that, someone men mentioning they took a look at, look at the DLSS branch and it says you need some DLSS regis registry files from an NVIDIA contact to use it. Could you say something about that? Yeah, it's that's uh, that's just I, I think it's um, it's just part of what makes it work. They're just little uh, registry files that uh, uh, that display debug text to sort of confirm it's working. And um, but I, it's not. It's just something. You, it's it's a very simple install. Um, uh, uh, I don't. I mean, it, uh, I'm not sure what the question is asking exactly, but it's just it's a. Uh, uh, it's it's a very simple install. You drop some registry keys on your copy of Windows, and and then you get like you can see it working and the debug text and things like that. It might have something to do with making sure that it's uh, that it's uh, from a development standpoint, it's it's properly working. I think the uh, they were wondering where, where they actually get the registry files. I haven't gone through the process myself, so I'm I'm not aware. Um, yeah. Um, the, uh, when you sign up for the development program, uh, everybody, like we have uh, uh, biz dev people uh, who uh, help uh, end users through that. So uh, once they're signed up, um, there should be a, uh, 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 a contact that they would uh, be assigned who can help them with that. And for a little bit of clarity. I don't believe, yeah. Yeah, I was just going to go over that. You know, this is uh, still early days for technology. NVIDIA is looking for feedback um, and for people to use it, know what it's being used for. Um, as we move forward, similar with, you know, features that Epic is putting out as well, you can access it early on the on the source builds of Unreal Engine, but then later on it, it will be available sort of for everyone with the vanilla branch and, and as a plug-in. And it won't be too soon as far as... Um, from, from what I heard, it's not too far away, <laughs> but no, no date yet, right? Yeah, I mean... Like uh, RTX GI, I couldn't talk about uh, even a month ago that it was coming out on um, uh, uh, September 1st. Uh, but I, I said, you know, a month ago, it's coming out soon. 
keep refreshing that page. It's coming uh -huh. right up. Um, and that was no joke. It, uh, it you know, came out quick. Um, uh, uh, you know, RTX GI is, is here. Anybody can get it. Just sign up for our development program and you got access to the source. And you can plug that right into Unreal 4 and, and go. Um, you don't have to be on our branch. You know, we've got a version that will work with uh, uh, mainline Unreal. So you don't have to, you know, you don't have to. It's totally up to you how you want to use it um, and what you use it for. Uh, uh, but yeah, uh, you know, Caustics is the other thing. It's, it's in a similar boat. It's coming out soon. It's going to be real quick. Will the uh, emissive lighting work with moving textures? Yeah. Uh, I, I don't have an example of that here, but it's, um, it is fully dynamic. So, yeah, I don't see a reason why yeah. it wouldn't. Right. It's just, it just, uh, it's constantly resampling your scenery frame. It samples that. And... Let's see. Can we get a quick sound check from you, Richard? We heard you drop right there. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Yep. Yeah, I think you're it? back. Yep. It's like every 30 or 40 minutes, it, Trust it, me. it drops out. I'm, okay. I'm aware of audio issues. <laughs> Thankfully, I had yeah. the audio interface crash before the stream, so I'm hoping it won't happen during the stream now. Right. It's just one more thing I want to show with, uh, mm -hmm. with GI, because this is, I think this is important, because you see an attic and you see like a, like sort of a, a, a cube map, example map. But um, I think the real test is doing something uh, like this, where we have a, an actual um, large open world uh, forest scene. Um, so this is, it's not the biggest map in the world, but it's fairly big, uh, you know, and there's, there's a lot of uh, uh, foliage going on here. Oh, and this too, this is where it's using volume fog. So let me start it. And here I'll wish we had some epic music to go along with Manny's adventure in uh, the I know, right? world. <laughs> so here, I mean, this is a great example of GI in an outdoor scene. Um, and there's actually, I'll just quickly explain. There's there's two GI volumes. Um, you can have multiple GI volumes. I mean, there's a threshold where if you put in dozens and hundreds, it be, hundreds, it becomes abusive. Yeah, but you don't need to do that, or at least you shouldn't need to do that. Um, uh, uh, in this case, this, this big level only has two. It's got one big volume that's static for the entire level. It just covers it end to end. And that's, that's like a light mass importance volume. Same thing. So you just wrap that thing around your level and it's got very sparse probes. So they're, those probes are like, whatever, they're like 30, 40 feet apart. Um, they don't need to be close together in order for you to get a good result. That's generally true, um, uh, but then there's a, there's a second uh, volume that's centered on the player, and it moves with him everywhere he moves. So that just shows how dynamic these probe volumes are, and that's done because uh, I want basically higher resolution GI around the player uh, than in the distance, um, and that could work for a multiplayer scenario too. Uh, that would scale up with you know. Uh, uh, lots of players running around, each one having their own G GI volume, because the system has additional uh, 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 smart elements to it, where you know it it, uh, uh, it it puts them to sleep when it needs to, and you know it, it you know it, it it can do stuff based on distance. So it's it's very very clever about um, making sure that performs well. But here I can just uh, I can just turn off GI, and you can see what that does. This is a fully dynamic, fully ray trace scene, um, but uh, GI is contributing so much. Um, it's quite a bit. Yeah, you would have to bake that bounce if you weren't using that. Yes, yes. And I mean, yeah, this just eliminates all bake times. Uh, workflow improvements, I think, are a big deal. So there's GI back on, mm -hmm. um, you know. I, I think that's a big part. A lot of a lot of artists who have been doing this for a while, you know, that's that's what they're thinking about, right? It's like uh, they don't want to do overnight bakes. They don't want to wait forever for uh, 
uh, light maps to finish and then oh they they missed an object and they got to move yeah. it again and now they got to rebake the whole thing and it's a nightmare um and they're constructing levels in a way where they're compartmentalizing things very specifically and so you go through all these extra hurdles and it becomes sort of a workflow problem if you can just dynamically generate it and keep it fast and good looking then you know you get rid of all those problems mm -hmm. so there's you know gi off This is a real stress test of the system. And by the way, these are using the uh, Kite demo assets. So this is just like the free stuff off the uh, Epic Store. Uh, Kite demo was made four or five years ago. So uh, nothing especially special about these assets, right? So this is GI on, um, GI off. Yeah, this this little part of the of the level is particularly interesting, right? Because of how tight yeah. the the uh, tree coverage is, and yeah, yeah, uh, this is this is not probably even realistic for games because it's too dense. Like, if you're actually doing this for a game, you'd want to clean this up a little bit, and not have so much like foliage overlap. Mm -hmm. This is a crazy amount of overlap. This is like a real insane stress test. Uh, I don't think most of most sane developers would do something like this, but this that's part of the point, right? Is um, uh, to see uh, what it's capable of. And this yeah. is so great because, uh, you know, we're getting uh, some skylight from above and I come here under the tree canopies and I'm getting appropriately lit as I get in, move into really dark areas. I mean, look at that. And I, as I as I clear the trees and come out here towards the water. I'm incrementally getting brighter like I should. Mm -hmm. It's not so binary, right? The, the the shadowing is very subtle, very dynamic. Oh, and, uh, I, you know, this is running without, um, uh, I mean, I'm losing, what do we just, what do we determine? I'm losing like 20 frames a second or something because of the, of the real-time streaming. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, if I turn on, uh, oh, I, I can't. Okay. Yeah, I don't have it on this one. But uh, yeah, if I turned on uh, uh, DLSS, it would you know double my frame rate uh, on these scenes. So yeah, this is I mean this is really pushing it. <laughs> There's like way too much foliage here. Yeah, yeah. The shaded complexity, <laughs> shaded complexity debug view would probably uh, show us a lot of red and white right here. Yeah, it's 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 a pure red mess. Yeah, <laughs> but that's yeah, but you know. Got to got to stress test it right, and we we're we're trying to push graphics forward, so mm -hmm. that's all part of it. Yeah, it's super exciting. Yeah, here's some. I mean, more mesh lights, and I left these visible so that people could see. But um, like you know, they they just basically match my sky color more or less. Um, but you can use them. Like I just want a little bit of extra GI GI light being generated in one area as opposed to another. You know, and you don't have to do it that way. You could still, you could put in lights, spotlights or whatever, you know, you could do it the old way, but you get these for free. So why not? Um, right. And so when you talk about sort of an open world um, for free, it's a lot better than an incremental cost for every uh, yeah. little sort of visual tweak you want to add. Right. This is, there's, there's a whole discussion topic here because like if you're a lighting artist or just an environment artist in general, you're often looking at hot spots, right? Like I'm using too many shadow casting lights over here and maybe very few over here. So over here, I'm getting 70 frames per second and this one area, I'm getting 20 frames a second. RTX GI kind of flattens that out, right? This, so if you're, if you're like, I'm putting in shadow casting mesh lights wherever I need them and I'm not putting in uh, uh, tons of rect lights and spotlights that are shadow casting all over the place. I don't have to worry about managing those lights or, uh, you know, uh, turning them off by distance. I don't have to try to optimize the scene in any special way. I just get that flat two millisecond cost and I get all the lighting I need. Um, and, you know, you still might want the, the certain areas you might say, okay, I need a rect light here, but I would bet that in most scenes you can get away with a lot less lighting. Um, than you used to in the past. And this, this scene here, I think, is a good example of that because 
this this lighting that's coming in is is pure GI lighting. So um, you know if I if I turn that off, uh, right, gets very flat right there. Right, it's reading the normal map. It's doing everything it you'd expect it to do, just like a real light. And it's occluded, so the light's pouring in down from below, but then it's not coming right here. So this is like getting a shadow casting light for free. Very powerful stuff. Yeah. Probably there... can't emphasize that enough. <laughs> <laughs> there was a question whether the shadows in this demo were ray traced, all of them, for the uh, specifically yeah, for the foliage. Uh... Yes. Yes, it's all this is all ray tracing. This is this is a very much a stress test scene. This is um um oh whoops. This is uh it's a fully dynamic scene. Um using, you know, basically modern assets, right? These are they're fairly high poly. I think they were meant like I said, they were meant for the kite demo. So it was meant for a cinematic from four years ago. That was the intention behind these assets. But um uh, you know they're uh, they're being used here in real time and ray traced. Um, and no lower. I'm I'm not lowering the resolution of any of the assets or changing what the material is. Like these are two sided foliage uh, materials. Um, you know it's it's uh, it's using all the original material attributes for the for the uh, cinematic. Um, uh, but you know. Uh, being done here, ray traced uh, with GI on. So, uh, like I said, I couldn't I couldn't say that even probably any more than I'm I am already. It's it's just a very much a stress test of what ray tracing can do, especially like uh, you know I think it was said a couple of years ago by uh, your lead engineer that uh, like doing a forest or a jungle is going to be the worst case scenario for ray tracing because of all the ray trace translucency that needs to happen. All the you know, rays being cast against uh, 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 the edges of leaves and stuff like that. But it is 100% uh, handling it here. Yeah, get some get some animals in there. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, I do want to talk about caustics. Yes, I think a lot so, of people have been waiting for us to actually get into the caustics, and I, I did intentionally use it as the image because I find this to be absolutely mesmerizing. Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm right there with you. Uh, I don't know what to say about caustics half the time because it, it blows my mind. Um, okay, so you can you can see my screen okay? Yeah. Okay, cool. Do you want to go full um, screen for us? Oh, sure. So, yeah... Um, I, this is a this is a, a different branch that we're in now. Um, uh, yeah, I did have. I, I, you said you, you had people on who were running like five copies of Unreal at once and stuff like that. I'm only <laughs> running. I was only running two copies of Unreal. Uh, but um, so yeah, this is. Uh, well, I mean, I'll just start moving stuff around. These are actually some improvements over, uh, if anybody had seen the previous uh, video that we'd shown on this, um, there, there were, uh, I mean, this is very beta software. It's still in beta. Mm -hmm. um, so if you see imperfect things, don't be surprised. Um, but it was actually, uh, some people pointed out it was doing uh, like the wrong things before. Like I think the, the, the red, blue uh, rainbow effect was, was flipped the wrong way and stuff like that. And uh, this is supposedly, I think this is the corrected latest code, um, but it's uh, 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 more accurate and producing uh, smoother images than than before. Um, this is this what you're seeing here is just uh, I, I've I've talked about this before, but it's just it's it's attempting to reproduce uh, uh, Newton's uh, prism test, where he's like, oh, if I just shoot some light at a prism which is right here, uh, that light should, uh, you know, it should uh, refract and uh, uh, break apart into its uh, rainbow. And then if I, if I uh, create a lens, which is what this is here, and put it somewhere, you know, to catch, catch the rainbow, literally, um, it would reassemble 
that back into white light, which it's it's basically doing right here. So it's this is uh, simulating in real time um, the uh, you know like a, a a very sort of physically accurate, physically based caustic effect. And these these actors here are very simple. I can show you like there's almost nothing to it. Um, it's just the geometry, the prism geometry. Which has just got a little bit of uh, edge polygons on it, but that's even completely unnecessary. It could be a, a very low poly object. And then the, uh, uh, the material, uh, which has got some... Uh, you know, it's 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 a very simple material. I can show the, uh, you know, anybody who's a material artist could do this in their sleep, right? And this is, um, you know, it's just got basic attributes uh, for simulating physical behavior. So, like for example, if I um, if you look here, you see how, you know, so here's my light source, right? And it's shooting a this is a rect light very narrowly focused and it's shooting a white hot beam but when it hits this surface here it's it's like it's bouncing light back out you can see that mm -hmm. yeah it's um i mean that that sort of refraction the fact that not all light is absorbed physically into the object and then and then sent out you know in other methods um or other directions uh that refraction is is partly a uh, you know, based on its, its, its metallicness. So as I ramp that down, you know, the surface gets, I make it zero on, on metallic. It's, uh, yeah, uh, you know, it loses that reflective behavior, but that completely makes sense. Um, because if it's a mirror, um, light will go in and then bounce back out. This is one of the, one of the first things I want to do with ray tracing when I first saw it was like, Oh, I, I want a mirror that you can hold and I can shoot like if a beam of light hits the mirror, I want light to come back out. Mm -hmm. And ray tracing uh, today can't do that, but with caustics we can. Um, you get that 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 full sort of uh, physical behavior that's um, where it's it's literally simulating virtual photons and, and just doing all these incredible dynamics with it, um, and it's very tweakable. Um, so I don't know if anybody has any questions at this point. I should probably stop talking for a second. But there are um, a lot of wows. I, I'm still also just looking, being a little bit me mesmerized by it. Let me let me see. You see, I mean, look at that. Like the way the light bounces back out. Okay. And this is also using um, this is these are like little shadow casting lights that also are generating caustics. Um, just just doing that to give it a little bit of extra oomph. You know, lots of. We do like uh, extra artistic ones. choices. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I'm one of those. Uh, I'm one of those hack artists that likes to exaggerate things so that people can see them. Um, you know, if you want more subtle effects, you can do that. That's totally possible. You didn't actually show me moving that point light, and that is. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. Yeah. And it's it's very tunable. Like you have a lot of controls here, as uh, whether or not a light is is a caustic light or not, you know, you have that, that's on the light source itself. So you can say, um, I want this light source to cast mesh caustics or not. So it'll stop generating them. Or I want it to cast water caustics too. Those are separate <laughs> concepts yeah. for us right now. Water caustics as opposed to mesh caustics, water caustics. Is, you know, we know what that result, what we want that to look like. Um, mesh caustics is any arbitrary mesh, uh, in, a, a glass object, stained glass, um, you know, whatever, uh, and how light transmits through that, uh, that physical, uh, shape. Um, there was, a but just, uh, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, well, I Who's mean, going to do this now. <laughs> uh, the, we had a question in regards to if, if, if this will make it possible to build physical accurate optics like lenses. And you did talk about this earlier. Um, sort of yeah. the uh, example of a magnifying is... glass. This is a lens right here. That that is a lens. Look at what it's doing. If I don't want it to be so bouncy, I don't. You know, I can I can change those attributes. It, 
it's almost like you get extra light out of a light, <laughs> right? It's like it's like making extra light all over the place. It's uh, it's it's pretty wild. Okay, so I mean, but this is a neat this is a neat sort of tech demo. But uh, I mean, we could do. I'll, I'll show one other scene here, just because. Uh, no, don't say it. You know, more stress tests, right? You're gonna have to go full screen for this one. Oh, sure. It's so pretty. Yeah. And so people can feel uh, assured about the performance. I like again. I'm on a 2080 Ti card. I'm not on. I mean, it's it's a very powerful card. It's a beast. But you know, it's not even the fastest card anymore. And we're um, also running Discord. Yes, I'm losing frame rate from that a significant amount of frame rate. And if I had the LSS on, normally for me this is around 90 frames a second, um, without it really dropping much of anything. So it's like in that 80 to 90 range. Uh, on this hardware. Wow, there's that that there's one spot right there with this crazy blue, a little bit farther. Oh, That's beautiful. That? I don't know. You you hit it. The, yeah, there. Oh my God! What is that? Yeah, I don't know, but it looks awesome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it will do things you don't expect. Yeah, disco balls are possible. Magnifying glasses. Or magn yeah, a magnifying lens. Um, yeah, it's uh, the capabilities are. Um, I, I almost feel like it's unknowable right now because mm -hmm. it's uh, it's so powerful. This also fundamentally changes what we do with light and what what you use a light source in Unreal for. So that's and I, that's almost uh, I don't know. It's it's very hard to grasp what that is exactly. Um, I do want to show, let's see, uh, yeah, no, I don't want to say it, but I, anyway, we'll switch over. Yeah. You, uh, you mentioned before a call that sort of what's missing to make that demo really cool would be a light that is actually a laser. Yes. Um, that's a, that's an interesting thing because, um, like what do we have in Unreal right now for light sources? You got point lights, uh, spotlights, rec lights. Uh, we don't really have a light that we can put in the scene that is um, uh, like a like a uh, that doesn't have like a, a width to it, right? Like there's no like precise laser point light uh, where all the all the uh, all the the virtual photons coming out of the light source are traveling in the same direction. It's got a it's got a it's got an arc, a little bit of a width to it. Um, so even with a rec light there, I really had to struggle to get it very narrowly focused. You can see it's still got a little bit of a width to it. Um, but, uh, 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 you know, if uh, the, the caustics is almost begging for a, a like a new light source, like a laser pointer type mm -hmm. where you can, you know, I, I've, I've sort of like uh, hack it a little bit to, to just with a rec light, but um, yeah, that would, that would be really interesting if someone could come up with that. I'd I'd be really appreciative. <laughs> uh, this this one here, I'll just uh, I'll play it. We'll uh, let it speak for itself. So this is uh, water caustics. And a nice little custom waiting animation on Manny. Yeah, um, uh, the artist who put this together, uh, I think he, there's like some uh, free uh, water assets. I think anybody can get these water assets and the way the character moves through it. Okay. Um, so that he just grabbed that stuff. Like this is the seaside town. I think that's, those are free assets off the store. Um, oh, and so everybody knows, like I was saying before, when you're looking at uh, RTX GI is, shipping it's 1.0 um a lot of the kinks are worked out it's um you know it's it's very solid 
Uh, Caustics is still being worked on. It's in beta. So if you see any little issues, just keep in mind that's a beta thing. Like I'll just I'll point it out. I don't like pointing out mistakes, but the you can see one right here where the character has got like a little bit of a. I mean, he's he's ghosting in the water. That's just you know that's something that'll get resolved. There's like a duplicate of him. But here you can really see the caustics working. Like if I jump in the water, see all that, all that light deformation. That's that's water caustics. If I put my camera under the water, and there are a lot of things here um, that you can make to sort of make it look more realistic. This is just a demo yes. of the caustics, right? Yeah, very rapidly put together. This, is, like I said, this is the seaside town assets. Anybody could grab that. I think uh, he dropped the water in. And we just kind of fiddle with it, you know. Um, I'm riffing on it; he's riffing on it. We're mm -hmm. we're just kind of messing with uh, what can be done here. But like all this lighting here, that's all that's all caustic effects. And you have a lot of control. Is how intense do you want it? How far do you want it to project? Um, what's the resolution factor? Uh, so those are all tunable controls. And this uh, this is you know a scene running without GI. So I'm, I'm trying to show stuff in a little bit in isolation and, and so on. So you can just get a look at, here's a ray trace scene, fully dynamic ray trace scene, but um, it's got caustic effects on it and dynamics. You can see there, the, this is one of the great side benefits of uh, caustics and something that's really sought after by a lot of artists, which is, um, well, you can see it right there, mm -hmm. uh, translucent shadows, translucent yep. colored shadows uh, for the first time in uh, ray tracing and no special trick to achieve each sort no. of shadow and color yeah i mean if i put a i don't know if i can nudge it probably creating some purple there i just can't get close enough to yeah it. <laughs> well the red one over the blue one it's, it's like it's almost like painting with light i i i don't know i feel like i don't know what is possible with the technology like this but like here's a, a you know sort of a stained glass window prototype you know, you can see the character absorbing light differently, uh -huh. depending on where he's standing. And over here with these, like, look at the way the light is gathering in the spheres at the base. It's, if I can get the camera down, it's doing like a magnifying glass. Yeah, I don't, I don't think I've seen such interesting spheres rolling around in the... Uh... <laughs> prior to this right some dynamics physics are always fun right e yes yes they are just automatically fun yeah because yeah, this is see, i mean yeah see like a, a a church window um you know that that kind of tiled colors and like the shadow of that Exactly. Like, yeah. Uh, I mean, uh, when, I mean, um, you know, I had a friend ask me, it's like, I was getting into ray tracing and he's like, can it do stained glass windows? Cause I think like every 3d artist, they want to make that, you know, they want to make that really cool, like, uh, 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 Diablo type scene or, mm -hmm. or whatever, where it's like, you know, it's a old broken down church with a broken stained glass windows and light pouring through it in a really, uh, creepy, awesome way you know you can do that with uh with caustics uh, there's there seems to be so many like side benefits to this uh this this rendering technology you get translucent shadows as part of it you get you get water effects um caustics uh i don't remember if i've said it but caustics reads both um uh, like animated mesh and animated normal maps in order to determine uh where the what the caustic effect is so if you if you animated a normal map on this uh you know it would uh here it's um i think this is i think this movement is happening because the water is actually it's a deformed mesh that's animating so that's why it looks like that so all the artists had to do who put the scene together was uh uh drop in a a, a mesh with the the appropriate like animated deformation on it the caustic effects you get as part of the technology. Okay. Um, yeah, the the transmission through the water, the refraction back out of the water, up against surfaces. You can see it's you know like 
under this thing here. Yeah. I feel like me and uh, Andreas, he was on the stream a couple of weeks ago. We need to uh, revisit our little, or his little sailing game prototype so that we can get some of these effects <laughs> added to it. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, so, I mean, yeah, this, we're, I think it's been said we're going we're gonna to do uh, Caustics as a, its own special branch. It's going to be a side branch, not um, at least in the initial release. Mm -hmm. And it will be out soon. Um, so anybody can get it and anybody can uh, 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 mess with it. Uh, uh, we're doing that because the, the change to like the material system and translucency and ref reflection, just like basically how, uh, how deeply involved all those changes are, it's a, it's a big code change in order to do this. Uh, I know, surprise, right? Caustics might, you know, this, this might be a, 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 a generational leap in software. Um, uh, but it's, I, in order to do these effects, it is, it is a large change to Unreal. What we're, what we're trying to figure out is more efficient ways to do that. And I think we'll, we'll get there. But rather than sit on the code and not release it, we're going to put it in a branch that anybody can get and you can make a game with it. You can you can pull down that code, compile a binary, and ship a game with that code. You can uh, pull down the GI plugin and have Caustics in GI. Um, so uh, uh, you you can do all that if you can't wait for it to be more widely released or for us to you know uh, work out um, uh, like you know sort of wider distribution. Uh, if you want to jump in early. Uh, we'll give you a way to do that. See, uh, there's a question here that I am not familiar with the terminology, but perhaps you sure. do. Uh, would the caustics be able to produce interference pattern through double slit? Uh, that's a good question. I don't know. Um, this is, that's, a, I, that's, a, that's a test I'd love to do. Uh, uh, thank you, whoever asked the question. Uh, I will, I'll tell you what. I'll, I'll test it. We'll see what happens. Awesome. Um, there was also someone asking about GI bounces, and maybe we should clarify that there is no GI in the scene, right? Right, no GI in the scene. This is just caustics. Um, there's another question. There seems to be some flicker in the split light of caustics. Where is that coming from? The split light. Yeah, it could also just be the stream compression. <laughs> there are a lot of, um, I'm I'm even seeing a, a couple of artifacts on my end before I'm streaming it out to Twitch. So, sure. Well, I mean, I'll I can I can talk about just how Caustics kind of does its thing. It's yeah. you know, it's another ray tracing effect. But in order, I mean, I can I can I think I can say this like how it actually works, uh, at least at a high level. And keep in mind, I'm not a coder, so <laughs> I'll do my best. But it's uh it's using ray tracing to determine like what the light should be, what the shadow should be. It's to do all those calculations. Um, but the actual projection into the world is like a volumetric screen space effect, right? So it's, uh, you. I mean, everything about ray tracing, everything about Unreal right now in ray tracing is kind of a hybrid model. That's not, that hasn't changed yet. Ray tracing in Unreal is, you know, we use real ray tracing for some, certain things like shadows, reflections, and we use rasterization for other things like post-process effects, bloom, because you don't need to, it doesn't make sense to ray trace those right now. The rasterization is good for, for certain things and ray tracing is good for other stuff. And it all just works together, right? So, but that gives us the capability to do things like that where we're, um, you know, we're uh, 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 ray tracing, you know, how light should behave. But then it's that that uh, ray traced result is getting projected into the scene as a like a three dimensional texture. So I mean that that means that it there are there will be circumstances where like if you get really close to it, like if you got really close to the surface, you see it uh it just disappears because it's because it's got screen space aspects to it. But you know you'd have to get pretty close, uh, or you know be really. Um, uh, crazy on your scale, uh, uh, and and there are controls for that. Like you can, you, it is tunable. Like as far as like, you know, where it draws and what the resolution is and and things like that. So, 
um, there's, there's lots of ways for, uh, uh, you know, you to uh, fine tune those results. And um, I'll be completely honest with everybody. I'm for yet in caustics. I'm learning about this just like everybody else is like, you know, I'm, I'm getting, I'm getting a chance to use it early, but I think there are people uh, at NVIDIA who know more about this than I do. So, yeah, uh, uh, when we started talking about doing the live stream, um, you, you sort of just briefly mentioned caustics and um, we weren't entirely sure if it would even be ready uh, for in time, you know, to show off at the stream. And then, uh, yeah. you know, uh, a week or two ago, you were like, yep, here, check this out, got the demo and, uh, and here we are showing it off. Yeah, I, I, this is, this is awesome stuff, right? I mean, <laughs> it's, it's yeah. really incredible what least. it adds to the scene. Yeah, I thought, uh, gosh, I don't know. Um, uh, another question came up. Uh, can it cast shadows from reflected? Um, can it cast shadows from reflected by water light? I think there you mean if it can cast shadows from the water caustics. Mm, I, I, I actually don't know. Okay. I'm not 100% sure about that. I, I think, I mean, there's the, the sort of like the virtual photons that get reprojected into the scene. Um, I, I, they can be occluded. I know that. And I, they, they can be colorized. Um, uh, and like, okay, so these are right here. This might be, I don't, I don't know if this will answer the question exactly, but like these are uh, translucent uh, colored objects, right? And you see there's like colored translucency coming mm -hmm. through them. And it's, uh, you know, colors are doing what they do. Uh, the ones over here are uh, not transparent. These are just pure reflective solid, right? So this is generating light. That looks like it's casting a shadow. There's green uh, light, you know, or I mean the sunlight yeah. bouncing off the surface. And you know, he's occluding it, I would technically be a shadow. So I don't know if water will do that, but at least the mesh caustics do. Yeah, there's uh, some physics for you. <laughs> it's another, uh... Like I said, this is, this is not a fine-tuned scene, so just everybody knows. It's not like <laughs> tuned <laughs> for every uh, consideration. It's just a quick example. Early preview. Uh, interesting question here. Um, yeah. Can you change the speed of each ray, like how light goes slower in water than air? That's an interesting question. Yeah. Uh, not that I'm aware of. Um, I'm not even sure if anybody's considered that one yet. But that's a really interesting question. I did, I did see someone ask a question before uh, about uh, simulating black holes. Oh. Um, yeah, I, I, the answer to that one is no, because that would mean that we would need to be uh, modifying photonic behavior based on gravity, which we're not doing. Um, but, you know, and then fully simulating that, right? So light is getting bent according to uh, yeah. the mass of objects. Like that would be, that's, a, that's an incredible thought, and it's probably possible. I don't, maybe, but it's, uh, uh, you know, is. Yeah, there's there's lots of possible, like real physical simulations. Uh, can we do them in real time at 90 frames a second? That's a good question. Um, will the caustics be cast from translucent foliage? I don't see why not. Yeah, it, it should any translucent material. Yep, should be a foliage or anything. A foliage a foliage actor is just another just a, a form of an instance static mesh mm -hmm. it's it's batched a little bit differently but it's just another mesh really i just caught or learned yesterday how you can replace individual instances of the foliage with an actual oh yeah yeah actual mesh just using yeah. a uh, foliage instance class actor thanks bry um Someone, uh, once again, maybe some folks joined a little bit later um, during the stream. There was a question came up in regards to if the RTX GI U4 plugin will become available on the marketplace. Um, in which way it will be um, available, I don't think we are entirely sure, um, but it will be available for public download. Yeah, it's uh, right now today it's available to anybody through our development program. But getting on the development program is pretty easy. 
Uh, you just go there, you sign up. Uh, it's not a painful process. I've done it myself. Um, and uh, you can, uh, and then you have access to the source and you can download the plugin. Um, that's how we're doing it today. I can't talk about what our future plans are. I, I can say though that, I mean, we would like to be um, as, uh, we would like to go as wide with the software as possible. Uh, you know, we want to get into er every developer's hands. So this is something that we're constantly looking at and working on. Um, they were curious. Uh, I don't know if there was anything else in this scene, um, but they were curious if it was possible for you to drop a, uh, let's see, what was the question? Uh, volumetric fog in the demo with the prisms. Oh, I, I'm not sure if this branch, I don't think it has volumetric fog. The, uh, it should if it's anywhere for 2.5, um, hide fog, and then you turn on the volumetric fog option. Perhaps oh, yeah, but uh, in the mainline in the mainline version, that does not currently work with ray tracing, and this is a ray trace scene. So I would need to, I'd need to make some changes in order to do that. They just want some more but, eye candy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Me too. I imagine it would look... I imagine it would look good, um, but that's that's a uh, that's that's a good uh, 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 point to bring up. I mean, this is this is why this sort of thing is important, right? Because that 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 person's asking the right kind of question, which is um, does does your software from one department of Nvidia work with the other department of Nvidia? It should. We should all all the software should work together and create like a a seamless uh, total result. Mm -hmm. That, get, that gets us closer to, well, you know, closer to the matrix, I suppose. <laughs> I guess so. Yeah, because you don't want to make decisions where, you know, oh, I, I want this cool feature, but I can't then, like, then I can't use the, right. this other one, right? As an artist, you, That's right. you want to have the power of all of it and be able to, you know, combine a power to make yeah. your ultimate. And image. if you're on our development program, you have access to, to RTX GI, DLSS. You want to make sure everything works together. And it, it produces a very good result. So any area where like maybe something doesn't quite blend right with something else, those are those are weaknesses that we would be fixing. I'd say they're they're a priority. They're they're very important for us. All right. Um I think I think we gone through a good amount of the questions. Oh, uh, this is a good question. The um, the foliage in the forest demo uh, didn't seem like it was using world position offset. Um, are there any updates on when this will be supported? Uh, uh, not a specific update. Uh, that's that's correct. It's, uh, world position offsets turned off there. Ray tracing shadows and foliage currently don't support that. Uh, but this is on our radar, and we're going to fix it, and we're going to do it soon. Yeah, I, I know it's being worked on. Um, yep, so it, it's, it's important. Not, it's not something that's impossible. <laughs> yeah. They're just some yeah. interesting problems to solve. It's basically what I was yes. saying. Yeah, I mean, because ray tracing changed how graphics are processed, like, and, mm -hmm. and that you know, literally like every mesh in the scene has to be calculated simultaneously uh, in, in certain respects where it didn't have to be before. Because rasterization, you're only worried about what's in your frame. Ray tracing has to consider everything behind the camera because it might be reflecting. So, you know, uh, because of that, like, sort of fundamental change in how meshes are grouped and loaded into memory and processed, um, that meant new problems to solve. But, uh, yeah, this is a known issue, and uh, it's going to get fixed. Awesome. Um, was there anything else in particular you wanted to demonstrate for us today? Oh boy. Uh, I think, no, I think I've shown everything I have, uh, uh, but I, uh, I really appreciate uh, uh, you hosting this and this is, this is really cool. Uh, yeah, it that, is uh, really cool. Have a chance to have a chance to show everybody uh, what we're up to. Yeah, we can just sit, sit and keep watching for a little bit. I think someone was even like, can you please show the prism scene again? <laughs> <laughs> I can, I can load it up. Sure. Yeah. Uh, we have another, another good 10 minutes here. Okay.
Yeah, I'm not sure how we're doing on time. No, we're, we're doing good, actually. Okay. When we start hitting the two and a half hour mark, that's when I'm like... Uh... Oh, what did I just do? Hold on. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah, prism stuff is fun. Yeah. In fact, I think um, you might notice that the effect is kind of weak right here, and but that's just like a a tuning control uh, that you have. Like, there's lots of resolution and intensity adjustments. You can make your light brighter and get more effect out of it, or you can just pump up the intensity of the effect. Um, oh, they're they're saying the other map know, with with. With all oh, the one them. with all of them? Yeah. Yeah, there's Newton's Law 1 and Newton's Law 2. Uh, I'm going to start making sound effects, and yeah. I really shouldn't do that. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if anybody else is doing that right now. No, it's a lot of fun. It's just incredible what's yeah, uh, just what's possible and, and, here. and the, the colors and how dynamic they are, like just even trying to fake that, like you know, with the any method, it'll be difficult to get. Yeah, that this is quality. this is literally where okay, so you when I talked about like generational like ray tracing technology, that first generation, mm -hmm. a first pass at ray tracing shadows and reflections. Uh, that was really just, let's just make ray tracing, you know, it, it, the, the initial effects were kind of like uh, better than raster, but not fundamentally different or something you couldn't do before. Caustics is probably something you couldn't do before. This is, this is now we're getting to a, a new territory with uh, uh, lighting and shadow and refraction where it's, it's very photo real and doing things that you probably just can't do with rasterization. This is where this is where the technology really starts to open up. Uh, yeah, we can just sit here. Just keep watching you <laughs> turn that turn that light and keep being amazed all day, I think. But uh Yeah. I mean there's a lot I haven't experimented with here either. Um like what happens if I feed a different colored light into it? I don't know. I just went straight for the white light because I was like you know, let's let's split it apart, right? Uh huh. Let's let's turn it into a rainbow. But, I mean, gosh, I don't know. It looks like it's still actually splitting the light through that prism there to some right. degree. Yeah, I'm not familiar enough with Newton's law to be able to tell whether it's physically accurate or not. If you shine a in this case a pink, violet. Yeah. And those are really good questions too that we uh, we might have to vet at some point, because mm -hmm. um, uh, I mean it's just it's it's a it's a it's a fun topic. I I've, I've mentioned it before, but it's probably worth repeating, um, just as an expression of how powerful this is. Uh, the the coder who wrote the caustic system didn't know this was possible. Um, he, he wasn't thinking about like I'm going to take light and split it apart with a prism and then reassemble it with a lens. He totally wasn't thinking about that. He was just, he was just, what is the math I need to figure out in order to, to uh, simulate photons um, in real time? Uh, uh, you know, and do all that correct, physically accurate behavior. And then it was the thought that, well, you know, what if we put a prism in there? What if we just simulate the, 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 the physical density of that prism and with a, a refraction factor and it's translucent? And you put a light on it. What happens? Is it going to behave like an object in, in the real world? And this is the result. He was surprised as anybody that it actually worked. And that's often what happens in science, right? Yeah, I, but see that what's what's important about that is this, that really reinforces that he's got a good system, 
or that mm -hmm. the system is, is, is probably the right one, or at least really close. If it's not exactly right, it's in the ballpark. Um, and, you know, I mean, talking to programmers, they'll, they'll be the first ones to tell you that, like, what's being done in ray tracing is not, um, it's, you know, this is not, we're not at the matrix yet, right? We're not simulating, right. um, <laughs> yeah, like, <laughs> atoms and particles, um, but we're getting closer. <laughs> it's, it's, you know, and uh, any place where it's, uh, it needs a little more work, those are, like, areas of research um, to figure out and uh, take to the next level. Um, so there, I mean, there's a lot of work being done in that, that area. Yeah, some of the results are just crazy. Yeah. I'm... Like, what is that about? <laughs> <laughs> Somebody needs to get like uh, 40 prisms and <laughs> like I was, a, a really hot light my source. My exact thought, we need, we need to have like a, you know, a real demo and compare yeah. that and see like what, what actually happens here. Cause I've, I don't think I've ever seen sort of this experiment done in real life. And so I can't tell whether that's, you know, accurate or not. It's beautiful, but is it accurate? Don't know. Yeah. You know, so this is a, so this is a test scene with just one light. I mean, I could just put like a, a really large attenuation radi radius on it. So it's just infinitely casting basically. And then you can make it unrealistic in the sense that it won't cast shadows. So it'll just go right through. Which is maybe a behavior that you want, maybe not. But I mean, this sort of um, like, uh, I don't know, uh, how realistic you want it to be versus how simulated or, or, or whatever. I mean, mm -hmm. you have those options, you can tune it. Um, I think there's a lot of potential here. I mean, just for uh, academic pur purposes, because you can make it very simulated, very, very close to real, probably. Yeah, and if, and then it's a, and then just kind of test these things virtually is, I mean, without having you know, just construct whatever you want in virtually, and then um, try out like sort of like different physical results is very fascinating. Yeah, I mean, using high power lasers can be dangerous, right? So. <laughs> right, exactly. Especially you when you're pointing it at a, a prisms placed in a random location. You never know where that bounce is going to go, right? So, Yes. That's amazing. Uh, Richard, thank you so much for um, preparing this little presentation for us. Today, or little, I'd say it's, there's, there's quite a lot to it. Um, it's been amazing to see some of the advancements that's being made. Um, yeah. And having you, uh, having you talk about it and show us uh, as well a little bit you know, what you're able to do as an artist uh, using these tools and sort of the philosophy that you apply when you are sort of one of, the, one of the first people in the world to get to play with this kind of tech. Um, well, yeah, thank you. It's a, you know, I, uh, I appreciate that. That's, uh, no, it's a, it's a lot of fun. I mean, and this is, um, I mean, really, I'm just trying to, like, for my part, I'm trying to help NVIDIA figure out the technology, right? Because mm -hmm. there's a lot of simulated systems here, but uh, you got to, uh, put it together with uh, actual content and, and does it really work? Can it work for game developers? Is it a real tangible thing? Uh, everything I'm showing today is a yes, 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 yes. You can do all that. Um, so, yeah, it's a, uh, I, I just can't wait to see what people do with this. I, yeah. I know that's a little cliche, but it's, it's, a, uh, it's an unusually powerful technology <clears throat> that we're heading into. <clears throat> All right, I think um, with that said, I'm going to do my, my short little outro spiel. Um, thanks to everyone for watching today. If you've been sticking around with us from the, from the beginning, it's awesome to have you with us. Um, if you are um, curious about you know, what's happening, on, happening in the Unreal Engine world, make sure you follow us on Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn. Um, and if you are new to the world of Unreal Engine and you're curious where you can sort of learn all these things, I mean, we've definitely mentioned a couple of terminologies today that if you are new to the world of game development or, or real-time uh, graphics, um, a good place to go is learn.unrealengine.com and you find our entire course library of uh, courses related to Unreal Engine. And uh, there's a lot of good content there, so go check it out if you're learning. Um, we, even though, you know, the world is in a very different state today, there are still virtual meetups occurring. We do have uh, over 100 uh, physical meetup groups in the world. 
Um, you can go to communities.unrealengine.com to find where they are. Um, even though they're not doing any in-person meetups right now, and we don't recommend them to, um, some of them are still throwing virtual meetups, and it's a chance for you to get to know people um, close in your area or just join a meetup in another part of the world. I don't think anyone would... Um, not want to have you there. So go check the page out. Uh, if you are interested in sort of forming or hosting a meetup in your city, there's also a little form there um, where you become a leader that you can click and then fill that out, get in touch with us, and we will sort of uh, give you the information that's required for you to spin up your own meetup group. Um, we are still looking for countdown videos for the live stream. So if you've been in from the beginning, uh, we do a, a sort of a five minute, it's a sped up version of about 30 minutes of development. Send that uh, to us. So 30 minutes of development, sped up to five minutes. Go ahead and send that to us and then you might become one of our uh, sort of spotlight countdown videos. Um, don't worry about the music. We, we, take, we take care of the music, licensing rights and all of that. Uh, it gets a little tricky sometimes. Um, we're always every week doing our community spotlights. The places we look at are plenty, but uh, a really good place is the forums, the released and the work in progress thread, as well as the unofficial Discord channel, uh, Unreal Slackers, which is unrealslackers.org. Great place to talk about Unreal Engine development and everything related to it. Um, I said, make sure you follow us on social media. That's where we announce all the streams or the event section on the forums. That's where the first place where you'll see um, which stream will, will, will come next in a couple of weeks. Um, I have a super old note here that next week it's animating with the control rig sample project. That is not true. Next week we actually have New World Interactive coming on the stream to talk about Insurgency Sandstorm. Now there is something else to that. It's not just about the game, but they haven't done the announcement yet. So I'm going to keep that a little bit of a secret, but um, New World Interactive will be on talking about Insurgency Sandstorm and something that's going on um, in that realm of the world. Um, with that said, special thanks to NVIDIA for letting Richard come on the stream today um, and Amanda behind the sidelines for taking care of all the questions that came in today. There was definitely quite a bit of them, um, so I'm glad to have that help. Uh, and to all of you out there, um, I hope you, thanks to all of you for watching and hanging out with us and being so um, interactive in chat. It's great. Um, hope you're all doing, all doing well, staying safe out there. Um, Richard, anything else you want to end the stream with? Uh, no, thank you, everybody. This is uh, this is really great. It's fun for me to do, so I really appreciate it. Well, uh, I thank think you. Uh, since this is sort of you know you mentioned ray tracing um, like level two or or you know the next era, I do believe there will be more yeah. chances for you to come on and and show off, continue to show off um, the new technologies that Nvidia are developing. Yeah, it's I mean it's it's a constantly moving target, and yeah, it's 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 not sitting still. Super exciting. With that said, once again, stay safe, everyone. We will see you again next week at the same time. Take care. Mm -hmm.